G'day everyone, Boz here from OpenCore for today's Property Wealth Wad. Got a cracker for you today, uh, and the reason it's so great is because it covers a wide range of, um, I guess, topics and considerations that couples will have when investing together. Okay, so there's some structural specifics that we can go through, but there's some, some bigger parts at play here in terms of the dynamics that involve any decision where two different people are, are concerned. So um, having done this for 15 years and speaking to you know probably 15 to 20 couples um, uh, on a weekly basis over that time frame, um, undeniably uh, in any relationship, typically when it comes to investing, there is what I call a driver and a passenger. And that's just not to say that the passenger is any less involved, but from a mindset and a motivation perspective, Okay, um, it's exactly like driving a car. Someone is in control and taking that car to the end destination. And the passenger is taking a more passive role in that journey. But using that analogy, what is fundamental is that both um, parties within that couple start their journey from the same level of understanding of where they want to get to. Okay, beyond that, um, provided there is consistency on what you want to achieve, that the goals are aligned. Um, and that you recognize that there might be different comfort levels, but you also agree that um, there's a need to take action and to build a portfolio to improve your financial situation, then beyond that point, someone can take the lead. One, one um, or both, if you like, of the couple can be equally um, invested in that journey and I guess really take care of the day-to-day -day management, day-to-day -day communication of the wealth building structure. But the one thing that I would encourage all of you couples out there today watching today's WOD is to um, understand that a little bit of uh, time upfront is required um, in order to be successful to start on the same page. Okay? Um, I've seen numerous examples where it's worked really well. Uh, both couples are aligned, one's more comfortable than the other. They take each other on the journey, they get agreement and they achieve fantastic financial success. On the flip side, I've seen it quite the other way, where one, one party is running at a million miles an hour, uh, the other one feels left behind and, uh, and puts up the defences, and uh, arguments ensue, no actions taken, and a really poor financial outcome uh, is achieved, relative to what could have been done if some time was taken to start on the same page. So really important, have a discussion with your partner, what's important to us, do we have agreement on it? One of, one of us is happy to take the lead, but let's make sure that we've got commitment and agreement on where we want to get to um, before we actually start. Okay, so once we've got to that point, and let's say that you're moving forward on your journey, um, a few little tips and tricks that are a, lot, a lot of people are surprised about when it comes to how to structure uh, these purchases. Okay, now, um, General disclaimer, I'm not an accountant and I'm not a lawyer, so um, always get uh, advice on your own personal situation. Um, but having done this for a while, um, I'm gonna talk through, I guess, general structure, um, learnings and insights that you can take away to be more informed. So the, uh, the first one is if you're a married couple, then typically if something happens to one of those parties, um, touch wood it doesn't, but if it does, then the other, um, uh, in, in terms of death or you know, passing, the existing um, uh, member of that couple would actually retain the asset. Now, um, if you're a uh, de facto couple, it will depend on how long you've been living together. <clears throat> but if you're in a partnership, so for example, uh, myself and Cam as, uh, as mates, as an example, then um, you need to make sure that that is actually specified in the will that my part of, or my, um, ownership percentage of that property would transfer to the other person within that partnership. Okay, so um, don't get too bogged down in the detail, but just safe to say, depending on the structure that you're looking to invest and who you're looking to invest with, understand that there are differences between married couples, de facto couples, and partnerships as well. Okay, so into some of the practical stuff that we can look at now, um, we're gonna look at ownership percentages because there are actually two ways that you can um, acquire an investment property and have it structured. The first is what we call joint ownership. Uh, the second way is what we call tenants in common. Okay, so I'll give you an example of what this looks like. So let's say, here's person one, here's person two. 
And uh, down here, we've got the different taxable incomes of these people. So let's say in scenario one, uh, person one earns 70K and person two earns 70K as well. Now, because um, the, the ownership percentages really relate to how you can maximize your tax benefits relating to this property, okay? So if we've got this scenario here, then what would make sense, um, all else being equal, okay, and this is where you need to get some personal guidance, uh, or some guidance on your personal situation, I should say, is that because the taxable incomes are the same, and they fit within the same tax bracket, then that would be a situation where you could have what's called joint ownership, okay? So 50-50 between person one and person two in the relationship, okay? Pretty simple, okay? Um, the second scenario we might look at, let's say that person one uh, is the major breadwinner and earns 140, okay? And person two works part-time um, and earns 35,000. Now clearly, because of the different marginal tax rates, and if you're not sure um, what they are, instead of going through it now, check out the ATO website. Just, just put personal income tax rates 2018 into, uh, into the search function, and that table will come up, and it will, sh will show you how much tax you pay on certain taxable incomes. But safe to say that each of these two incomes here uh, pay tax at a different marginal tax rate. So what would make sense in this scenario because person one earns more income and pays more tax, to have the majority of the ownership for tax purposes in their name and the minority of ownership for tax purposes in person, two, person uh, two's name. Okay. Now I've used 99.1 here. Um, these days a lot of the banks are restricting it to as much as 90%, 10% in terms of a bias towards the higher tax earner, okay? But those percentages can be anything. It could be 60, 40, it could be 70, 30. It will all depend on what the incomes here are and what's gonna give you the best tax benefit. But regardless, this kind of structure where it's not default 50-50 is called tenants in common, okay? Just to finish, guys, um, the most important thing when understanding this is on the uh, paperwork that you sign for the, um, your solicitor or conveyancer prior to settlement, typically they'll ask you to nominate whether it's joint ownership or tenants in common. Um, what a lot of people do, and we see this um, uh, when we're helping family and friends in the early days, is they'd say, oh, well, I'm buying with someone else. So someone in this situation, for example, would say, oh, well, I'm buying with someone else so I'll tick the joint ownership box. And as a result, they were missing out on thousands of dollars worth of tax benefit compared to if they'd had it set it up right as tenants in common. Okay, so to all you couples out there, get on the same page, be committed to taking action. It's fine for someone to be driving the bus, but make sure you start on the same page. And most importantly, make sure you get it set up right to maximize those tax benefits and minimize the cost to you out of your pocket. Hope you found that useful. We'll uh, catch you next time. Bye for now.